What's up, reptile enthusiasts? It's Dan, the tortoise man, with CBReptile.com, your home for captive red reptiles and reptile accessories. And today, we are going to be doing the finishing steps on our terrarium build for one of our lily white crested gecko juveniles. So as you can see, we have a lot of greenery. We're going to be replacing what we put in temporarily to have a little bit more aesthetic to show you what it's like to get the starting phases off. Towards the floor is going to be some of this moss that's beautifully set up over here. And then if we take it to this side, look at all these wonderful plants that we have to offer to our terrariums. We are going to be playing with our lily white during that time. She's gonna get a little bit of a handful, but it's gonna be totally worth it so she can see how her home is being built. So let's take a quick second and let's get started. So I'll show you what the back is gonna look like and what we're gonna do with all these beautiful plants. Okay guys, so let me real quick just take my wonderful pressing gecko, place her right on my shirt because that is probably their favorite place while being held. So while we're doing this, we have a beautiful facade, everything's looking great on the front, but let's take the time to look at the back of what our setup's gonna look like. So if we just go like this, and spin her around, as you guys can tell, the back of our terrarium is looking a little bit empty. You can see the cork, you can see how it kind of bows out in the background. This is gonna give us a wonderful space for us to have our plants root and use up a space that's not necessarily going to be utilized already by your gecko. So we're gonna show you the little holes, the little nooks and crannies that are still left behind that we didn't cover with the silicone. That's going to leave beautiful tiny spaces for basically just the entirety of the roots that are going to be there as well as the base of the stem. That way, pretty much growing from this wall from the back side is gonna have all the roots and all the soil back here. But in the front side, we'll get all the good stuff. We're gonna have the plants, we're gonna have all the pretty colors that they're gonna come with. And it's going to make our vivarium a lot more vivid. I also wanna direct your attention over here. We have over here going to be the main food and water hub for your crested gecko. This is going to be absolutely amazing. It's a little bit of a magnetic shelf, so you're going to be using up a lot more of that airspace. Considering we don't have a lot of floor space inside of this 12 by 12 by 18, they're gonna have a lot more floor space, so using that climbing space using that air that's going to be above there, we can use this to basically and simply have a non-permanent fixture kind of stuck to the side. That way they can use that in their environment and even assist in climbing. These guys have a very simple diet. They eat a powder diet that's mixed with water to create a bit of a paste. They lap that paste up with their gorgeous tongues uh, and then they also are required to have water. So there's two separate bins in here and each of these bins has a cup that comes with them. Uh, you can get these solo cups and you know get rid of them as you use them. Um, it's never good to reuse these cups and they are disposable for that particular reason. So that's what we're going to be doing here with these cups. We're going to be replacing them and we wanna leave that Pangea food, that powder mix, only in for one day. After one day, it's going to be bad for them. So you wanna always make sure they have a little bit of food at their repertoire. And if you do give them that food daily, you wanna make sure that you take that away from them overnight, just to ensure that they're not going to be getting any type of um, diseases, any type of sickness coming from old food. Um, why don't I just put her right here on my shirt and then let's get started with a few of these plants. So let's take out this one. This one's got a nice solid root in it. What we're doing here is we have some cuttings here at cbreptile.com. And with these cuttings, we will take them and put them directly inside of water within a hole that's cut inside of some styrofoam. That way they float. That way the roots are gonna be the only thing exposed to that water. So when they are propagating, they have a way for the plant to grow within this water and the leaves aren't gonna get soggy. And even when the water starts getting lower in level, these are just gonna float down with it too. So it's perfect for propagating a bunch of plants at one time. And these are some plants that we are propagating particularly for this build out. So we're gonna be using these plants first and foremost. And if we have any extra room, we're gonna be adding some of these full grown guys to the base, sort of like how we added uh, that purple plant in the very beginning. So how about we get right into this and I'll find a nice pretty hole. Uh, not on my arm, my <laughs> little girl. How about we take you and put you right on my shirt? How's that? Looking good. All right, so let me find a nice hole for here. And All right guys, so we are done 
about approximately the plant phase. If we need to add some more later, we will. But what we're gonna do from this point on is going to be putting in some moss, making sure that um, the surfaces in this have a little bit of moss on it to make it have a little bit more of a naturalistic glow. We're also going to be removing that um, top fake English ivy that we had in there before for that aesthetic, for the functionality of it all. What we're gonna be doing now is putting soil into the backdrop and putting down this moss. So let's get to it. Okay guys, so what we're gonna be doing is taking some of these different types of moss. As you can see, there's a ton of different types of moss. Uh, this one's got a little bit of wispies in it. Um, we got this one over here that's got a lot of like really green moss. It kind of looks like a, like a bit of a fern. And then over here we have that traditional lumpy stuff. Um, I don't know if you guys have this around your guys' place, but uh, this is super, super common in New Jersey. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna find some flat portions for something not too big and we can also break this apart. So we have a little bit of moss right here. Um, the thing about the moss is wherever you put it, it's just gonna start latching onto, especially if it is a porous material. So this porous material is going to be perfect for this moss. What the second step of this is going to be hydrating. So we have over here one of our squirt bottles. These are going to spray over that moisture so it'll give a nice even coating on the surface and that's going to be soaked down to the roots. Going to have that um, material on the bottom that is going to be easy for them to work their roots into, that porous material. So let's take a few of these different types of mosses so we have a nice coverage. Okay guys, so now that we have a ton of this moss inside of our setup, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our squirt bottle and we're gonna spray it down to ensure that it gets nice and hydrated, nice and settled into its new home. So let's just take a provisional soap and just kind of give it a misting, a nice heavy misting on all parts to ensure it knows that this is gonna be where it's gotta hunker down, where it's gotta stay. Let's get a little bit in there. Over here we have some isopods on this log. These isopods are going to be absolutely wonderful for ensuring that our setup has a little bit of a bioactive tendency to it. So anything that's going to be eating, anything that's going to be pooping is gonna need something to clean up after, it, right? The thing to clean up after is gonna be these isopods. So what we're gonna do is basically just take this whole colony and we're gonna be dumping her right inside of this setup. So real quick, just get the residual out there. And then they're all pretty much clustered right here. Um, so we're just going to take this piece and we're going to put it right in the back to ensure that they are finding themselves a way. Okay guys, and as you can see, we have our terrarium flipped back around. It's not looking as pretty, but it is looking like we have some work to do. So as you can see, we have some roots coming in right here. We have a big old root coming in right here, which is the biggest area that we have. So the biggest plant is going to get the most soil. Um, and then over here, we have some reptile soil. This is some reptile soil that we use here at cbreptile.com to ensure that our plants are going to have a safe place to be growing that's going to keep and ensure that our reptile is healthy. So we're going to have a montage of me filling this up like so. All right guys, so we're looking really good now. Everything seems to be nice and filled up in this area, which is fantastic. That's exactly what we were looking for. So now let's give our plants a little bit of water. Let's see if this is going to retain that same level. If it gets a little compacted, you can always add a little bit more of your reptile soil. So this is going to be an important part of this to ensure that you know everything's looking absolutely perfect, that the water is going to be compacting it all and making sure that the plants are gonna be getting some of that water too is going to aid in their survival and be absolutely key in the functionality of having these plants inside of this habitat. Okay guys, so let's flip this bad boy around. Let's get to the business end of it all and let's make sure that we are going to have the last couple of things that we need to ensure that this is gonna be the perfect home for our gecko. So the last few steps are going to be ensuring that they have food and water and ensuring that they have light. So over here we have our Bowl. This is going to be one for their Pangea, powdered mixed food, paste, and then this is also going to be for water. So let's take a loop around here and let's add it to, say, this area. This high space is kind of used up using this log, but you know what's not being used up? This side's area over here. So be back in just one millisecond. Okay guys, and here, a millisecond later, we are putting this bad boy on. So these ledges are fantastic. They have magnetics on either side, so they lock in tight even through the glass. So it comes with two separate places. That way it has two locked in points. It's not going to spill one way or the other. Super important. So why don't I just get one of these magnets to start off and we can make sure that we're putting it at a good place. And then what we're gonna do is just like so, 
put it a little bit higher, and I'd say we can use this as a thing to go under it. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to put that underneath. Or we could put it up top. Let's try this. We're going to put it right about there for now. And then as the plant, because this is not a permanent fixture by any means, as the plant starts growing, we'll ensure that they're not going to be impeding on their food and water. If we need to move the food and water, we can. If we need to move the plant, we can. Okay guys, the last step is going to be lighting. Making sure that the lights are going to be on the inside part of this plastic rim that is at the top of your terrarium is going to be perfect for some of these LED lights. These LED lights are going to be great for projecting a spectrum of colors that are going to allow your plants to grow very, very strongly. And it's also going to create a day and night cycle for your gecko. So they know exactly what time's day, they know exactly what time's night because you're going to be regulating using these lights. Here's a little bit of the light we're using. The light that we have is going to have a, a silicone, a, uh, a rubber outside. So there's not gonna be any exposed wires, nothing that could harm them. And it's not going to be able to get water damaged either. So you wanna make sure that you're playing it safe for your gecko. Okay guys, we're back. And as you can see, our color spectrum is going off the chains right now. This thing is amazing. I love these lights and I love what they can do, especially because they come with a brilliant remote. So if you wanted to say orange, you can turn it orange. If you want it blue, you can turn it blue. If you want it red, you can turn it red. And if you just wanted to go off, you can just kind of put it on a fade. It has some pre-settings on here. These things are amazing. So this is a great way to, you know, utilize that space within your terrarium very effectively, create that light very effectively. Um, and if you just wanted a classic white, you can always give it a white. These things are gonna have great red and blue spectrum. So you know they're gonna be perfect for for your plants. These things, I can't stress enough, are going to be great. The moment that our Lily White has been waiting for, she's getting a look at her brand new home. Everything's looking absolutely phenomenal. So we're gonna put her inside here and then we're gonna take a little bit of a tour. Let her get to know her home a little bit before we get to intrude on her space. So let's just take her and then give her a brilliant introduction. Look at her go! She loves it. I can easily say that she loves it. Right now she's perched up in the back area, kind of towards that hide where we have it kind of set up. So why don't I pick you guys up and I show you around a little bit in a very close detail. Okay guys, and as you can see, we have everything set up perfectly for our Lily White Crested Gecko. We have our lights projecting a nice red and blue spectrum into there, so the plants are going to be loving it. And there's also going to be a day and night cycle using these lights. As you can see, our Lily White Crested Gecko back in this corner found herself a wonderful hiding space, exactly where we wanted her to be. That hiding space is going to loop back around underneath here and then pop out here, so as you can see, right, as you can see, there's a little bit of light shining through there and you can actually see her foot. Oh, what a cute foot. So uh, we're looking over here for that hide effect. She's looking over there um, to make sure that she feels a little bit more secure. We are poking around her home and she jumped right into it. So how about we talk a little bit about this floor. Uh, we have some moss over here and this moss is going to be a little bit different from this moss. And this moss is gonna be a little bit different from this moss. And this moss is gonna be a little bit different from that moss. That moss is going to be dragging all the way across there. And hopefully we can see that um, going all the way to the back edge. She's got herself some moss over here on this, um, this fern type moss, this really reachy stuff. Um, and there's also gonna be some moss behind her too, if you can see right there. There's gonna be some moss. And there's another plant back there too. So hopefully we can see that plant um, growing all the way up this wall over here and creating a nice effect. With this plant up here, what we're doing is hopefully you want to replace that English ivy a little bit quicker than um, this plant can. So this plant is going to be down here tucked inside of this cork round. The cork round is going to be covered a little bit by this moss, so it's going to be reaching onto this cork round. And then this cork round is going to be propped up between these two using this iguana branch as a nice stable climbing device so she can get up here, so she can jump right from there onto her food and water. So her food and water are gonna be over here, nice and calm out of the way, um, easily accessible for her, but also giving her a lot of room down here too so she can climb around. Uh, remember when we gave her that beautiful perch? Well, that perch is going to be amazing um, for a couple of reasons. So if you can check out over here, we have a beautiful plant going on. And then if you check out over here, we have a separate plant going on. If you check out over here, we have another plant going on. So we added a bunch of plants onto the wall and they're all going to be taking their time to grow, taking their time to um, really mature inside of this terrarium. Um, this Lily White Crested Gecko is one of our juvenile Lily White Crested Geckos. So we're going to be building her another terrarium when she is ready to get out of this one, which shouldn't be too long. And then if you guys are interested in seeing that, you guys should definitely hit that subscribe button. You guys should definitely ring that bell icon to make sure that you don't miss it.
So if you guys liked the video, if you guys learned anything, don't forget to hit that like button as well. Until next time, we'll see you guys at cbreptile.com.